Thank you, Matt, and thank you all for joining us today. I'm Keith Sutton, Chair of the Wake County Board of Education. Today, we will discuss our efforts to prepare for a successful 2020-2021 school year. We also will share updates on food distribution and graduation ceremonies, as well as some advice for parents as they continue to support learning at home. I'll ask Superintendent Kathy Moore to get us started. Superintendent Moore. Thank you, Chair Sutton. I'd like to start today by highlighting a major milestone for our child nutrition services team who have been a steady beacon for thousands of families throughout this uncertain period. This week, they surpassed over 1 million meals served since school buildings closed in mid-March. They've been well supported by transportation staff who are delivering meals to 20 neighborhoods every weekday to ensure families have access to healthy food. In all, we are operating 60 food distribution sites serving hot lunches and breakfast items. And families will be able to count on us all the way until schools reopen, as we just announced this week that we will be extending food distribution through the summer. A reminder that food distribution will not occur on Memorial Day, but we are making sure to provide extra food to families today. These staff members day in and day out are living examples of just how much the district cares for our students and families. To all of them, I continue to and simply say thank you. Next, I would like to provide information about our efforts to gather parent and staff input regarding the proposed 2020-2021 school calendars. On Tuesday, the board discussed proposals from our calendar committee, which have been working for weeks to develop calendars that meet state requirements. We shared information about these proposals directly with our families and staff on Tuesday. Those communications were followed on Thursday by a frequently asked questions document sent to families and staff. We have also established online forums to receive additional feedback and answer questions. This information can be found at wcpss.net slash calendar proposals. Parent and staff feedback will be factored in as we consider any changes to the proposed calendars. But I would caution that state requirements and the need to delay the opening of year-round calendar schools pose significant restraints. The state is requiring districts to add and designate five remote learning days and add five in-person instructional days, separate and distinct from our regular instructional days. These requirements directly affect the calendars we are able to offer families. For example, traditional calendar teachers will likely lose five teacher work days to account for the newly required in-person instruction days. And year-round schools are proposed to add 15 minutes to their school days to ensure they meet state requirements for total instructional hours. So we must ask for everyone's understanding of our legal limitations as we work towards final calendars, which we expect the board to approve on June 2nd. Again, for more details on the proposed calendars and state requirements, I would encourage you to visit wcpss.net slash calendar proposals. Next, I'll briefly touch on a message for families who wish to apply for Title I pre-K programs for 2020-2021. We have extended the deadline for families to apply to June 5th to accommodate those who may have been unable to apply due to school closures and stay at home orders. The free preschool program, which is open to students who turn four years old on or before August 31st, prepares students to enter kindergarten ready to learn. Visit wcpss.net slash pre-K enrollment to learn more and apply. Lastly, I'd like to directly address parents who are supporting their children's learning at home. We know that you may have some good days with remote learning and that some days can be a challenge. That is to be expected. As I have mentioned several times, I've been impressed by the adaptability and creativity of our teachers, students, and parents as we have all figured out together the most effective ways to do remote learning. While it can never replace the classroom experience, we know the majority of our students are engaging daily with meaningful content. To those parents who have encountered obstacles, I want to remind you of two things. First, you are not alone. Your teachers and principals are there to help you address any problems you are facing. Make sure that you are staying in regular communication with them. We have also provided useful resources at wcpss.net slash remote learning tips. Here, you'll find practical advice 
about setting up a home learning environment that will maximize your child's ability to complete their work effectively. Second, you are succeeding, even if it doesn't always feel that way. Part of our grace and flexibility mantra is reminding parents that perfection is not a realistic goal. If your child is regularly engaging with teachers and classmates, as well as with content to help keep their minds sharp, that's really what matters. We have always relied on the support of parents, but this pandemic has forged even deeper relationships between schools and parents. That is something that I hope that we can build off of as we look not only to survive, but thrive in the next school year. Partners, please know that we value your parents. Please know that we value your efforts as partners. We are here for you and we are extremely grateful for all that you have done. With that, I will turn it back over to Chair Sutton. Thank you, Superintendent Moore. First, I'd like to provide an update on graduations. As we told you last week, we want to do everything we can to honor the class of 2020, giving them the celebrations and remembrances they so richly deserve while maintaining safety for all involved. Our academics team, principals, and school staff have been working diligently to plan and host graduation celebrations on high school campuses over the next several weeks. Two small high schools, Vernon Malone College and Career Academy and Wake Young Men's Leadership Academy are celebrating today with two of our larger high schools hosting events next week. Most will be held the week of June 8th. We are also planning virtual graduations and want to remind seniors that it is very important that they visit the senior portal at wcpssclassof2020.com to review and complete information, including their name, photo, and additional info needed for the virtual celebrations. The portal closes at 6 p.m. today, so seniors should make sure to visit the site as soon as possible. And again, our sincere and heartfelt congratulations to this very special class of young people. We know this isn't easy, but we admire your courage and your strength. You might not see it now, but this experience will embolden you as you face challenges and celebrate triumphs for the rest of your lives. As our seniors look to their futures, I want to speak to how we are looking to the 2020-2021 school year with optimism and determination and how we plan to make sure it is a year marked by efficient operation and high student achievement. I mentioned last week the formation of a community working group made up primarily of community members, parents, and educators who will offer advice on the many issues still to be decided for the opening of schools. Given the level of interest, we are thinking through the most effective way to engage stakeholders. We expect this group will continue to provide counsel once school buildings reopen. This week, I also want to mention the creation of a core team representing all facets of our organization. In the coming weeks, this core team will develop detailed readiness plans for every department as we return to in-person school. And they will also make sure we are well prepared should there be a resurgence of COVID-19. But even more importantly, they will be providing a roadmap to help ensure this next school year is a true success. They have a formidable task. Following preliminary work by district leaders the past several weeks, the core team will accelerate plans and attend to details in several key areas. Those areas include ensuring we can implement social distancing and health guidelines, delivering core instruction, including via digital learning, meeting the social emotional needs of students and staff, providing robust child nutrition and transportation services, and much, much more. I want to emphasize what Superintendent Moore said earlier. Our intention is not merely to survive in 2020, 2021, but to thrive. Our intent is to ensure every student experiences the learning, relationships, and services they need to excel in school and life. This pandemic has tested our capabilities, but in many ways, it has also strengthened them. We have found new ways to connect and stay connected to students and families 
and we have greatly expanded access to technology district-wide. We also have discovered new ways to teach as students have discovered new ways to learn. Now it is our task to capitalize on these innovations, blend them with successful practices of the past and shape a future where our students succeed like never before. We will now take questions from the media. Please identify yourself and the name of the media organization you represent. Hi, this is Joe Fisher with WREL. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, I just wanted to uh, get an update. I know we uh, covered your uh, the July start date for year round schools. Is that something that is still being considered? Uh, what is the process for getting ready for that? And also, uh, you know, we've just heard from a lot of parents who feel like that might be too soon. So what is what is the latest on year round schools? And so I'll start with that, Mr. Sutton. The proposal that staff has brought to the board for consideration delays the beginning of year-round schools to August 3rd. Um, that is the proposal that is before the board right now, and um, uh, we that is the feedback that we are taking from families right now. But um, in our multi-track year-round schools, we are uh, delaying the start to August 3rd. Did you have anything, Mr. Sutton? No, I don't have anything else to add. Correll Sampson with Spectrum News. Good morning to Chairman and Superintendent. Um, there's a report out about school buses being every other seat and and whatnot, kind of spacing the kids. Is that something that Wake County Schools is looking into? And what would be the cost if that um, was implemented? I'll, I'll start with that, Mr. Sutton. Uh, we are reviewing what social distancing would have to look like on our buses and um, whether that would mean additional routes or longer routes or um, how we stagger, um, if we're having to stagger student attendance, all of those play into what that's gonna look like, but we are committed to ensuring not only that our students are safe, but that we are following whatever the guidelines are that we are given. Anything else, Mr. Sutton? No, nothing else to, to add, I think, you know. Can you give the news them, Jeff? Have you discussed or what you're going to be doing for, let's say, the, the parents and staff who don't feel comfortable starting in August at any of the year-round schools or any of the other schools? I can start this one too, Mr. Sutton. So um, we, are, we are aware that we have both staff and families who have concerns about starting even in August. Um, and so we're going to look to see what the options are that we can provide. Um, you know, we've talked about the school year next year will need to look different. We already know that we're going to be required to have at least five days of remote learning. We are really exploring options at this point that allows us to see whether or not there is an expansion that is possible because we know that we have families that are concerned about their children returning and we have staff that are concerned about returning. Um, and we are exploring scenarios that would allow that. We're just not sure what they look like at this point and whether or not, quite frankly, they would be allowed. So we really need to pay attention to the guidance that's coming down from both the state and local health officials, as well as the Department of Public Instruction. Uh, and I'll just add, you know, we have received through emails and conversation uh, options and, and ideas and remember the desires from one end of the spectrum to the other uh, we've seen where parents want uh, a return to school that is that is normal uh, um, and we we've, we've seen or heard from parents who believe that we should not return to school until a vaccine uh, has been has been found uh, I think our job is to listen to and consider uh, all of the concerns uh, and ideas uh, that parents staff and the community 
uh, has suggested and try to create and find an environment uh, that is suitable for all, while at the same time making sure that we provide options uh, to those that uh, uh, either feel safe or that don't feel safe, uh, that there are options uh, that meet their needs as well. Do we have any more questions? Yeah, Corel Sampson with Spectrum News once again. Uh, is there any other school district that you're consulting with um, or kind of using, uh, piggybacking ideas with, or is this kind of something that you guys are, I don't want to say going on your own, but um, using your own plan? To which in a while that you start. Using, uh, could you repeat the question? Using our own plan to do what? Yeah, it, yeah. Are you? Is this uh, something that you're consulting with other districts with across the state or across the country to formulate a plan, or is this kind of what you're you're using inside inside sources? Well, there's. Um, I mean, we have internal staff that are working on options, but we are looking at plans that have been created in other states. Um, there's numerous states that have created reopening plans. We've looked at the CDC guidance that's more detailed that came out recently. We have two working groups of superintendents and staff in the state of North Carolina that are working on this, one through the Superintendents Association, one through the Department of Public Instruction with our state superintendent. And then um, we are also, Wake County Public Schools is also going to be joining a group um, that's being uh, formed out of Guilford County that includes some large districts to discuss not only the immediate reopening, but sort of the long-term uh, effects and impacts into the school year. So there are, there are a number of groups that are informing our work. Don't know if Mr. Sutton, if you had anything else. No, just was gonna mention the, the same in terms of some of the invitations and, and partnerships that we'll look at that we'll consider, uh, or that have, you know, we've received requests to, to join some of the other larger districts across the state uh, to share ideas uh, and strategies as well. So. Uh, we look forward to being a part of those here in the near future. This is Joe Fisher again with WREL. Just a quick question about these in-person graduations. Are you expecting to see uh, big crowds? Obviously, we know that you are doing um, you know, your work in trying to keep with the social distancing guidelines and also honoring them in person. Um, are you requiring people to um, tell you whether they're going to come to the graduation? And have you gotten any idea about how big those crowds will be? So the guidance that we sent to our principals um, at schools was, was that we needed to follow whatever the guidelines, the health and safety guidelines were that in, were in place at the time. Um, each school is managing their, their process and their messaging to their families on their own. Um, but uh, from the district level, what we have asked them to do is to make sure that they are following whatever guidelines are in place around the size of crowds and social distancing and that sort of thing. Kirk here for the News and Observer. Um, realizing we still haven't gotten the guidance from the state yet, but is there some timeline as to when you hope to be able to tell traditional calendar families about the start of the school year? Do you mean, you don't mean when, you mean what it's going to look like? Uh, both. So based on the legislation that was passed a couple of weekends ago the first day of the school year for traditional calendar families will be august 17th um, it was to be august 24th and the legislature added the week of august 17th those five days so we know that we will the traditional calendar school's first day of school is slated to be august 17th um, and again the work around what school will look like when we return is the work that's happening right now um, to make sure that we understand what social distancing looks like, what crowds might need to look like, whether we need to stagger students in schools, what our cleaning protocols are going to look like, what are we going to have to change for bus transportation. All of those are the conversations that we are having right now. Anything? No, nothing else. Like that. 
I'm directly expect it still will occur on August 17th that there won't have to be some kind of delay due to any lingering issues. So obviously the start date of August 17th is dependent on us being um, in a position uh, such that that is allowed to move forward. If the governor issues an order that is different, then obviously we would need to readjust and abide by that as would every other district.